Is someone going to get started on airway management? And stuff. One of the things that is going to be new to you, because y'all are, in th for some of you, some of you just getting some background. We've got some that are just EMTs. We have some that are military medics. So military medics have a lot of this already as well. But for most of us, we're going to, this is going to be our first introduction to the more advanced airway procedures. And today we're going to talk about some basic airway procedures as a review, because it's important. The one thing I just want to really emphasize is that the basics is the most important. And before you jump to an advanced procedure, you should have already had a basic procedure in place. I know whenever I've used to fly for Emory flight, and people would ask me all the time afterwards, like, why did you put an oral airway in when you knew you were going to innovate them? Well, it's because that three to four minutes before the innovation is very important as well. We need to make sure that the patient's being properly ventilated during that time, right? And you know, whenever I tested for Emory flight, you know what they tested me harder on than anything else? Airway management, but the basic skills. They didn't just say, hey, I want you to put in oral airway. They gave us a mannequin and gave us a scenario and they wanted us to go through the entire scenario. And if you did not start with the basics and work your way through, you got gigged. And because I was also an educator, I kind of knew that because that's what I was expecting. I went in with that. Whenever I tested that day for three positions, over 100 medics tested and a lot of them had CCEMT patches and stuff and I didn't have any of that and um, whenever it was over with I was told that the main thing that got me through was the way I handled the innovations so do not be afraid to utilize basic airway adjuncts I have this saying and I've always had this saying is that Paramedics save lives, y'all know that, right? EMTs save paramedics, though. How do they save paramedics? So when paramedics' heads in the cloud and they're all screwing up and they can't get the advanced airway, guess who steps in and takes over? Their partner. Throwing the oral airway, utilizes a superglottic airway or something. You can run like that patient and reminds them. Because you should be, as an EMT, reminding your partner, the medic, hey, dude, it's been two minutes. Patient's getting blue. Patient's getting, sats are dropping. You need to pull out. Don't be afraid to do that. They, you know, that your, your patches used to be round, right? They used to say they're round because they were steering wheels. And that used to make, make me so mad because it's just not what it is. You are an emergency medical technician. You're not a driver. It's not a D. You're an AEMT. You're there to treat patients, okay? So we're going to go from the gamut from basic airway procedures up to some advanced airway procedures. And now the American Heart Association has even emphasized that, you know what, innovation isn't this glory standard anymore. It used to be that that was the gold standard. Everybody, you know, we stopped everything. We'd be working a cardiac arrest and everybody doing some compressions. Everybody stop the medics here. He's going to innovate now. Everybody stop. The patient's not going to live because we're not circulating blood. We're not ventilating, but everybody stop so we can get. We don't do that. The perfect thing about what we can do with these superglottic airways is we haven't even got to stop compressions, y'all. Somebody's been trapped in a car. And you can get in there. You know what? I gotta do is grab the tongue, move it up, and shove that thing in there. And guess what? You got an airway. For you medics, I was an army medic too. You know what? In the field, you're getting shot at. Guess what? You just shove that thing in. You don't have to have a light if you're a tactical medicine. But as a tactical medic, I shoot. Love the combi too. I didn't carry an just scope. Because what's that light gonna do? Yeah, there you go. Hey, look, here I am. Everybody shoot over here. Shove it in, and guess what? It works. Most of them. I have seen it not work. 
but it was really operator because it doesn't work too well if there's an ET tube shoved in there as well. And you can't go from three tubes. That doesn't work well either. So, so just remember, basic, it, and just because, you know, there's this aura like, hey, I'm just an EMT, it's not just an EMT. You are now doing ACLS. Whenever it comes to working a code, you can do almost, almost everything and some drugs you can give now, okay? And the stuff that you can do makes a big difference in the survival of these patients. A big difference. Alright, so important steps in caring for any patients, maintain the airway. If you can't breathe, you can't live. For over, what, six minutes? That's about it. I, I have this running joke, you know, whenever I'm at the lake with the kids or something, and somebody says, hey, watch little Johnny so he doesn't drown. I was like, well, I've got any six minutes. <laughs> That's plenty of time, right? I can finish, I can finish my hamburger, go jump in and save them, have plenty of time for cake. All right, so we want to make sure the patient is breathing adequately. This is the key term, adequately, okay, not just breathing. And I want to go ahead and give you my, my suggestion on breathing adequately, what that means. Especially in any testing situation, or in, even in your biggest test, which is in the field. If you have a patient who is in a state of altered mental status, any altered mental status at all, okay? And if they're breathing anything outside the norm, so if you have altered mental status, you're breathing 28 times a minute, consider that inadequate. Because altered mental status is a sign of what? Lack of hypoxia. Exactly. It's a sign of hypoxia. Coupled with, so if you have a sign of hypoxia, coupled with some breathing abnormality, right? What should we treat first? breathing because we can pull that out can't we now if this patient comes around and they're like all right fight get away from me or whatever right well then you have to kind of modify things right but if they're not and they're laying there and they're taking it and they're ventilating then you need to continue that because now you have ruled out that it's breathing and then you move on to the next thing which might be cardiac metabolic something and I just, I think I pointed out how critical these skills are for us, not just for us. Because you're going to be a leader as an advanced EMT. Doesn't matter if you're with a paramedic or with another EMT or another advanced EMT or EMT intermediate or an EMR or whatever. Whenever you show up, if it calls for it, airway management, you have that skill. So just a little review. And make sure that you go back and you should be able to trace. And if you don't know how to do this, you need to trace a molecule of oxygen, one breath, starting from here, going through the nose and mouth, all the way down to the alveoli. And then you follow that into the bloodstream throughout the body. You need to be able to do that, okay? So we've got our nasal pharynx, oral, oral pharynx, and the larynx comes all the way down through the bronchioles, down to the alveoli. From the alveoli, the transaction occurs, right? Moves over. What causes the movement of oxygen from the alveoli into the bloodstream? What is that called? Diffusion, right. Very good. Diffusion. It moves from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. And the same thing happens with the carbon dioxide. There's a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood than there is in the alveoli, right? So it diffuses across. We also call that respiration, right? That's respiration occurs on the cellular level. The act of the air going in and out is actually called what? Ventilation. There's a difference between ventilation and respiration. Ventilation is inspiration is the in part, expiration is out part. 
So people will get that confused on a technical level. We will call it respiration, right? The whole thing, the whole act is the layman's term is respiration, but actually respiration takes part here, right? Ventilation takes part here, in and out. 